Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, I know it's been a minute since I was going to do a follow up on that last video on uh, collecting. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, this is pretty much a continuation of it. And what I want to do is tell you guys what happened, you know, about me getting the Super Nintendo. And I, I don't want to really get into my whole life story as far as collecting, but I'm just going to tell you what but basically just happen and why a lot of people get into the mess that they get uh first and foremost uh i was so excited when i got that super nintendo i was extremely excited because i went back in my childhood you know i had a super nintendo back in the mid or early mid 90s and i was finally able to go back and purchase a uh, super nintendo now i had an n64 as well but i gave that to my mom so i basically just i really just had I technically had four, uh, in four consoles, but only had three that was with me. Uh, so uh, I had my Dreamcast, my Xbox, and my Super Nintendo. Now, this is where things got really crazy for me to start off. Now, the Super Nintendo prices wasn't too bad. I mean, the games back in, you know, 2002, 2003 was extremely cheap. So I started racking up on those games. The more expensive games at, my, at the time was the Dreamcast and the original Xbox, mostly the original Xbox. Cause I think the Xbox games back then were like $49.99, like new and uh Dreamcast games was like $39.99. But there was a place called EB games where they still sold, they believe it or not back then they still sold retro. Well, I guess you could still, they were retro then retro games. So you can still get like super Nintendo games, Sega Genesis, playstation one it, as well as the new stuff as far as playstation 2 xbox and dreamcast at like eb games or electronic boutique and there was some other places like i remember a place called media play and uh you know uh i think circuit city was still open but you could still get all this stuff like they didn't stop selling like the the cartridge based games until like mid like mid 2000s like 2004 2005 maybe 2006 so I was just started racking up games. I was getting them dirt cheap. And my main problem was I was buying um, some games that I really didn't, you know, want. I just happened to get them because they were cheap. So I ended up getting a whole bunch of games that was just sitting around. And I never had a chance to play them because I was uh, more likely I was in college at the time. And uh, I was in school and I had a part time job and I had a social life. So when I didn't do it, when I didn't have any other things going on, I played a little bit of games, but I did more buying than playing. And that that's one problem that a lot of us collectors have. Um, so to this day, I still have that issue at some times, um, not just buying and playing, but just playing in general. And that's where you can really get caught up. And the reason why I say that is you can buy games based on your memories, your nostalgia, and the thoughts of how you've made think about a game and you will buy it, but you may never have time to play. And um, if you're a real gamer, you'll make time. Like you'll make the 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour a day, or maybe a couple of hours a week, um, play once every other day or something like that to get a feel of what games that you have, or do you want this game We have, you know, you don't have a, a inkling about what this game is like or whatever, even doing research, it doesn't really help. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, doing research don't help getting these games because of the fact that you are just uh, watching. You, you're getting a perspective of a game that's not yours. You're just, you're just figuring out what, it, what the games are. But when you actually are able to play certain games, you, you get a feel of like, okay, this RPG is this, so I kind of know what this is going to be like. Like the format's going to be the same. Fighting games, racing games, you know, puzzle games. If you you play games like regularly, like I said, maybe three times a week, you you have an idea. See, I didn't I didn't get that I didn't get that uh experience when I was just collecting. So I ended up with a whole bunch of games that I really didn't need. Now, um, what happened at that point? Um, all the Xbox games I ended up keeping regardless because that was my main focus on uh that was my main focus of collecting. Um, I always felt that the Xbox was the successor of the Dreamcast, which I love the Dreamcast. And 
I always felt that the Dreamcast will live through the Xbox. So I, I that that was no question. I made sure I got all the games that I wanted or that I needed in some sense for the Xbox. I mean, those games were those are the games. Now, there were some games on Dreamcast that was basically I felt like it was shovelware. I bought some of those. I ended up selling some of those off, you know, later on, you know, 10 years down the line, you know, uh, 15 years down the line because there were such games just sitting around. I mean, some of them are up here and I got some uh, see, yeah, right here as well. These are some of my Dreamcast games. And um, I, I, I significantly downsized to that because at one point I had maybe over uh, a thousand, not a thousand, good Lord. I maybe had like over a hundred um, Dreamcast games, and some of those games I I had no business having. But at the time, I bought them when they were cheap, and um, I did make a profit off them as I sold. But um, I, I had a whole bunch of them, and it was ridiculous. But I I held on to the Xbox games; those are the games that I held on to, and um, I still have a bunch of those back here. As far as the Super Nintendo games, um. Once again, those are just a bunch of games that I felt like they were just my childhood uh, memories. And I had a whole bunch of games on Super Nintendo, which a lot of people may look back now and say, hey, those were some great games back then. And um, there's some great games now that hold up really well. Yes, they do. And I, I, I held on to all the heavy hitters, you know, all, you know, the Contra 3s. Um, uh, I, what is that? Um, Castlevania 4 um you know super mario world or uh, super mario kart you know all those games super um was that the capcom game slam masters uh that that game is a lot of games i have back there that i held on to or some of them i end up having to rebuy because of um other reasons which i'll talk about down the road but um i end up offloading a lot of super nintendo games and um i i, I had at one point up to maybe uh two probably about up to 200 maybe 150 games somewhere between those two numbers i, I can remember last time i did an inventory once i left um once i left college and i was moving and that's when i realized how many games i had because i had a lot of games in my apartment in college but when i moved i moved to south carolina and i realized how many games i had and some of the stuff I had to go you know i gave a few games away to my friends uh, some of my college friends some of them I end up selling once I moved to South Carolina, but I offloaded maybe about a good 60, 50 or 60 games. Cause there's a lot of games that I, I've ended up completing. I don't even need no more. There were other um, means of playing the games back in, you know, 2006 or 2000. Well, that's when I graduated 06. There were other means of playing certain games. Uh, there was other games that I end up having to uh, just get rid of knowing that I'll just buy at a later time. So I offloaded a lot of games. I, now, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I had a, a, a pretty good significant uh, a collection still. And out of the three consoles, um, I had maybe about, what, maybe 300, uh, maybe 350 games, maybe, out of the three. Because I know I had about, like, uh, almost 100 and something of the Dreamcast. Uh, I can't remember how many Xbox games I had, but I know I had, like, almost 200 of the super nintendo so i it could have been about 50 50 xbox games it was something like that you know because back then you know those games weren't cheap so i didn't have like this big extravagant um collection i didn't start really taking off my collection on the xbox until like late um you know 20 it had to be like 2010 2012 which now i'll get down to that later on but what I what I'm really what I'm really saying is like I, said, I don't want I really didn't want to get into a whole spill about my entire col you know history of collecting per se but I will say that what what will really happen is you just don't have the time to play and when you don't have time to play you will start <clears throat> collecting stuff based on memory and nostalgia and when you do that that will really blind you as far as buying certain games. You will just start buying stuff because you think a game is a certain way and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, what you think it is. It may not even be the game that you want it to be. It, it, you may not even have time to play the game per se. It, it could get to a point where you're, uh, you know, just buying stuff because it looks cool or whatever the case may be. And that could really be an issue. So you got to be really careful. Hey, son. 
He just waking up. Yeah, you just wake up from your nap. No, you've been asleep all night. Yeah. All right, so I got my son with me, and um, I, I just don't have much else to say. It's just basically just be careful, you know, because that's one of the main ways that you can collect a lot of games. You basically think that you have something, you want to have it, and you think you have a game that you're really going to enjoy, but in some cases, you're just buying stuff, you know, just because of the thought. Even with the advertisement of a game, especially with retro games, do you see an advertisement on YouTube? You see somebody make a video about it. You may see, you know, a game in a store and the person that's behind the counter may tell you about the game, but it's nothing like until you play it. Now, before I get out of here, like, how do you combat that? Like, once again, just really figure out what games that you want to have in your collection. You really got to know for sure. You know, you can't let too many people or too many things influence you when purchasing games. I mean, that's one of the biggest issues that we have, you know, having game. And, and I'll talk about that in the next video when we're referring to this, the influence. How does that work? Why, is, why does that happen? How do we become uh, subjected to the influence? Because those things really can get you in trouble when buying games. Sometimes you just have to know what you want, what you want to play, and what type of, a collection that you want so those are the things you just have to you know figure out once you uh get those things together so um well get your collection started so i'm i'm gonna get out of here you know I, I know i can ramble i probably did in the middle of this video if you made it this far i appreciate it and um i'm definitely going to uh uh stay on this also i'm gonna do an episode of my vf cast and I want to talk about this Gerard completionist thing. That's like a really jacked up issue. You know, this whole thing with this open hand foundation stuff. I'm going to do a video on that prior to doing the VF cast, or that may be a part of the VF cast. I don't know, but I, I need to talk about that because that that's starting to, it, it, it's starting to upset me a little bit, but I'll talk about that sometime down the road. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. I'm out. You enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.